Turkish Airlines Euroleague. I feel devotion. Game presented by Turkish Airlines. Spalding. Intersport. Seven days. On the eve of the big event, the Magnificent Four arrived in Milan. The awards for the season and the 2014 Turkish Airlines EuroLeague MVP. The coaches and stars introduced the final four. Forecasts and previews from the protagonists. Nine months of intense basketball, the moment everyone has been waiting for, has finally arrived. It's Final Four time. The four teams landed in Milan on Wednesday, and the first to arrive at the hotel was Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv. The yellows were greeted by warm weather and an electric atmosphere, and for some, it was the first taste of what a Final Four feels like. We're definitely probably the least favorite team to win it all, but, um, you know, we feel that we have an equal chance as uh, everybody else, you know. We um, give ourselves a chance, we play hard, and we compete, and, you know, I think that gives us a chance to, um, you know, to win any game. We're going to have our, our, our people there, which is, you know, be tremendous support, and, you know, hopefully they can push us like, you know, when we're in Nokia. Just a few hours later, Seska Moscow made their entrance into the Milanese hotel. The Russian team are well accustomed to the Final Four atmosphere, as this is their third consecutive appearance. After so much hard work and sweat, all they want now to do is play. The trip was good. We had a good flight, you know, no, no anything extra special or anything. And uh, definitely ready, you know, we hopefully coming in with a good mindset and ready to play. A lot has been said, but I think just the most important, just, you know, know what our goal is, you know, just try to come out here and play our best basketball. As dusk was settling over the city on Wednesday, the two Spanish teams also arrived in Milan. Real Madrid, one of the big favourites from the start of the season, are ready to take on their eternal rivals in the Clásico. It was a good flight. You know, I'm just tired right now, hungry, uh, ready to go eat. And, uh, but, uh, you know, happy to be here. And, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of days where we have to talk to the press and do things like that. So it's going to be a little different for us. Um, but we've done this before from last year, so I think we'll be OK. We are in Milan, the fashion capital of the world, and nothing is left to chance. This is a, it's a MCM bag, something that I got when I went to uh, Munich. Uh, and then we have our Versace uh, suits. Um, so uh, they make us look good here in uh, Madrid, and uh, you know I like fashion, so uh, I take it to another level sometimes. <laughs> After dinner, the last team arrived, and the first to book its place in Milan, FC Barcelona. The Blaugrana are also playing their third consecutive Final Four, and the desire to bounce back is united with the pride of being there once again. Everything was good. Uh, obviously, everyone's excited to be here, and it's an honor for me to play for Barcelona and be in the Final Four. I'm just going to do what I, you know, what I do. I'm going to try to play hard and play defense, and then uh, offensively, I'm just going to try to take advantage of, you know, what the defense gets me. It's been, you know, a long season, and this is the moment we wait for, and you know, we, we there's no no excuses now.
Let's discover who the winners are now. We have five main categories of awards, with the first being the Alfonso Ford Top Scorer Award, an award named after one of the greatest shooting aces in basketball ever. And this season, our deserved winner with an average of 17.7 points per game across the season is Keith Langford from EA7 Emporial Money Milan. The 2013-2014 Best Defender Award goes to Brian Dunstone from Olympiakos Piraeus. With an eye on both the present season and the future, a very promising one, given the competition we had amongst the young players, our next award is the EuroLeague's Rising Star Award. And it goes to Bogdan Bogdanovic from Partizan NIS Belgrade. The official All EuroLeague first team for the 2013-2014 season. First All EuroLeague player is Sergio Rodriguez from Real Madrid. Second All EuroLeague first team player is Keith Langford from EA7 Emporial Money Milan. Third awarded player and in the first team for the second consecutive year is Rudy Fernandez from Real Madrid. Fourth player is Sonny Wims from Cesca Moscow. Fifth and final player, also repeating in the first team, is Ante Tomic from FC Barcelona. Winner of the We Win MVP for the 2013-2014 season is Sergio Rodriguez from Real Madrid. It's an honor to be, for me to be here with this award with such a great players and such a great uh, league. I want to thank my, my teammates, my coaches, all Real Madrid organization, and we go for the final four. Uh, this is time. Welcome, you all fans, players, coaches, team, sponsors, media, to our new edition of the Turkish Airlines Final Four. Unfortunately, this year I cannot welcome a person who is always with us. I'm referring to the president of Turkish Airlines, Mr. Topçu. Due to the terrible situation Turkey is living as a consequence of the tragic accident in where more than 280 people has been killed. We have mandated a minute of silence before each, uh, each semi-final game on Friday. Thank you, you all, and enjoy the final four. Maccabi coach, David Blatt. We from the Maccabi Lecture Tel Aviv are so proud and happy to be part of this great event. I congratulate my, my fellow colleagues and coaches for their tremendous uh, performance and season to all the great players that we see on a weekly basis in the Turkish uh, Airlines EuroLeague. Devin Smith. Everybody makes changes, you know, week by week. And, uh, you know, our, we have a great staff and coaches who prepare us to do, you know, great things on the court. So we have to do our job of relaying that message over to the floor. And, uh, you know, this is coming out with the aggressiveness and, you know, the commitment on defense. Ceska Moscow coach Ettore Messina. Good afternoon to everybody. And uh, like uh, David said, we're also very happy to be again one more time in the Final Four. It's a big, big uh, accomplishment for all of us. Uh, we started slowly, but I think we progressed very well in the top 16 and in the playoffs. I think that the new players have added us um, with some uh, depth, experience, toughness, and uh, to give us a more balanced team that hopefully will fight till the last minute. Sonny wins. Well, one thing that we adjusted is uh, we can't get too excited um, like we did last season. Uh, with a lot going on, uh, especially, you know, in the Final Four, it's a lot going on, a lot of, a lot of fans, a lot of people, you know, congratulating you and, and telling you how good you did this year. And uh, we just can't get, we can't feed into that. And uh, we have to go in with the mindset that we're playing a very tough team. Just being focused and uh, pay attention to the small things, especially the details. UFC Barcelona coach, Xavi Pascual. Bien, buenas tardes. Eh, 
contentos de estar aquí, es un honor estar aquí con todos vosotros un año más. I'm very happy to be here for another year. It's very difficult to talk about a decisive factor during a game between two teams that know each other so well. As always, it will be the details that decide what I think will be a very tight match. Under Tomic? First win Real Madrid, the first step. <laughs> of course, uh, this is my third uh, Final Four and my first objective here is not finish third, like first two years. <laughs> so, nothing, we have, we have uh, Real Madrid against us and it's going to be a tough game, like every game against them. Real Madrid coach Pablo Lasso? You cannot change things in, in one in one week. You have to do your basketball, the things that you've been doing during the whole uh, year that bring you here. And expecting to have a great game tomorrow, control the rhythm of the game, but a lot of little things that can make you win a game. Our MVP, Sergio Rodriguez. We've been playing together for a long time. Uh, we know each other and we know our roles. Uh, our coaches prepare us to be ready any moment. That's the biggest, the big, the biggest part that we have to know. Uh, how we want to play and how we prepare to win. The first semi-final of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four will be Seska Moscow against Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv, a rematch of the 2006 and 2008 EuroLeague Finals. A fascinating game that sees coach Ettore Messina take on the team coached by David Blatt. You have to fight to to go through a game five against such a good team like Panathinaikos, and um, you leave those uh, two three days with a great uh, uh, pressure on you, and you overcome that. I think that's something that helps the team to grow. We're the underdog. Uh, I say that hesitatingly because I, I don't feel it's uh, any particular advantage, and I, and I don't want to use that uh, as any kind of preliminary excuse for what we have to do there. Seska leads the all-time series 16-15. There is mutual respect between the players, they know each other well, and they also know what to expect from one another. Maccabi is a great team. Um, I think right now they're, they're playing their best basketball. They always kind of play these little, uh, these little deceptive and kind of tricky things. Um, especially defensively with their, you know, their matchup zones and their switching. Um, and they like to play, you know, kind of an up and down style game. For us, we, we're a little bit bigger than them. So, um, we each, you know, we're able to maybe play a little more interior and maybe, you know, try to take advantage of, of the matchups in the post um, and try to be possibly more physical than them. It's going to take a lot of fighting, a lot of fighting. I mean, I think probably on paper, they're probably the best team in Europe, you know. And you have to come out and, you know, respect that. But at the same time, we have to stay confident and come out and, and do what we know we can do. Both Seska and Maccabi can count on a first-class offensive game. However, there are some differences. Each team will play their cards, and then the court will decide who will come out on top. Offensively, they have uh, so many weapons. You know, they have inside game, they have outside game. Uh, they're on the floor. I think uh, if we play defense like we usually play, we're gonna be okay. Ceska got uh, a lot of weapons and uh, deep roster, big player size. We need to, to play our game, and uh, like we played all season, uh, we need to play together, we play smart, and to believe we can do it. I think we have a, a post presence from the bench and a post presence from the starting lineup. You know, we can really, we can really slow it down and play a half court game, and we can we can get it in and out uh, as much as possible. I think they have uh, only one post presence, which is Sofo. He only can play about 15 minutes a game. We don't have the experience that Chester has, but I believe uh, the players coming to the final four for the first time they got. Uh, the thirst and uh, the determination uh, and the, willing, the willingness to do whatever it takes. Under the boards, in one of the crucial challenges, 
Sophocles Skortsanitis, the best per minute scorer in the competition, will face Sasha Kaun and the two time All Euroleague centre, Nenad Kirstich. We have two of the toughest big men I've played. I mean, Sasha is uh, he's strong and uh, he just keeps coming. He just uh, he's, he never quits and uh, he always uh, works hard and fights for and fights. And, uh, he's uh, one of the best technical big men I've played. I don't believe there is a move that he cannot do, and uh, the move that he likes is really difficult to defend. Tofo is very good in balance, and he knows how to control his strength. If you play trick games with him, you push him, you let him go, or push, he knows. He, and he, he knows how to play back to basket, simple. For him, sometimes it's problem, foul trouble, and uh, defensively, and uh, hopefully we get him in early foul trouble, but that's something, you know, who knows what's going to happen. The duel in the backcourt also promises fireworks, as the point guards are ready to do battle. I've played against uh, Milos 20 times since I've been in Europe, and I mean, it's always a tough match when we play against, you know, a point guard that's great like that, and Aaron Jackson is, he's like the opposite of Milos in terms of the way that they play. And so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be a fun competition. Both of those guys like to compete, and we know that almost everything is at stake in one game. So the competition level will be really high. Me and Tyrese been playing against each other for a while, so it's just he's one of the, the toughest people to stay in front of. So it's gonna be a tough matchup, but I think I'm I think I'm I'm ready for it. He's in a great system where uh, you know he has a lot of freedom, he has a lot of space, and he takes full advantage of it. He's a player that has uh, that has balls. And he does whatever it takes to help his team win. So I gotta do a real good job of focus on him on all 40 minutes. Seska beat Maccabi twice this season and handed the Israeli powerhouse one of its toughest losses in European competition, 102-65 in Moscow. But this is a completely different situation. You can beat one team ten times in the season, but when it comes to Final Four, just one game, maybe you have a bad day and you're out. Our big, uh, biggest advantage, you know, 6,000 people in the fans, we will feel like home court. I don't know how many people from Moscow will come. Let's see. All that's left is to tip off. Experience and expectations no longer count. Let's play. When I get scared, I always think, well, probably even my opponent is scared. <laughs> so, so he's worried about my players, he's worried about my team. A great coach like Bosha Tanevich used to say that the experience is the sum, the total of all the mistakes you made in your life. And I hope that I don't bring too much of my mistakes in this Final Four and I don't mess up the game of my players. Beggars can't be choosers. You know, if you make the Final Four, you better be happy with the opportunity at hand and prepare in the right way and, and do your very best. The 2013 Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four in London saw rivals FC Barcelona and Real Madrid go head-to-head -head for a place in the final. Now, just 12 months down the line, they face each other again. Another Spanish derby will decide who will play the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Championship game in the never-ending story of El Clásico. El Clásico... Uh, so, uh, Playing the classical is a top thing for a guy like me who grew up in Barcelona. It's when you're more motivated, focused. You look at my career highs in terms of points, rebounds, assists. They're all against Real Madrid. It's a derby. Like football, like basketball, it's always Real Madrid and Barcelona, you know. So I think uh, there will know something different from the other games that we played before, you know. We have to do our best to win, we have to, to be ready more than 100%, you know. And we do our best and it's a sport. We, winning and losing, we have to accept it. Neither side has many weaknesses, but in a do or die game, you must find the chinks in the armour. In terms of basketball, uh, 
it's always uh, kind of the same game. Difficult, with a lot of strategies, with the rhythm of the game, uh, offensive weapons, defensive facts. In itself, what changed are a few players. The paths that led us here are relatively similar to last year. We changed several players, they perhaps change less. I think that in essence, the styles of play are not that different. At point guard, Marcelino Huertas has excelled all season. He's a, good, a great player, he's running the team very well. Uh, I was then playing uh, many games last two months and they are playing they are playing very good and he's a hell of a player he's been playing good for, for many years at the other end the two Sergios Rodriguez and Yui represent a real menace for the Blaugrana the battle is seeing who wins the battle for the tempo of the game. Lul especially likes to run a lot and likes to be decisive in the last moments of the games. He likes to have the ball in those situations. We must pay attention to him. Then Sergio Rodriguez, who almost always comes into the game in the second quarter, but also plays the game's endings and likes to be protagonist in them also. He has a more of a pick and roll style to make the team play and lately scoring his own points. And then of course try to wear them down so they're not as fresh in offense as they can be. These are the backcourt matchups. The physical battle will be fought around the paint. Eratem Lorbeck and Bostian Nachba against Nikola Mirotic, for example. I think they are the two best fours in Europe right now, so it's always great to play against them, especially in such a nice scenario as a final four. Or under the boards where all Euroleague first team centre Ante Tomic will face plenty of experience and strength. Borussis is he's experienced, he, he already played, I think he already played final four, so it's, it's always a good, good thing for me to play against those players who have more experience. Both teams have lots of stars, players that can decide the outcome of the match, but in the end, the greater team effort will take one of the two sides through to the final. Juan Carlos and Ante are great players. Uh, both of them can be uh, determined uh, in a game because Ante is uh, very good close to the basket. He passes the ball very good and, and he reads the, uh, the, good, the game very good from his position. Uh, Juan Carlos is, is a great scorer, a great scorer, a guy who can change the game just because he shots, uh, his movement, uh, what he creates for another players. Both team got, has a lot of great players uh, who can design the game for each part. We'll look for a strategy that we think is the better to try to stop each player as we always do, even though those five or six players you mentioned, plus Carol, are top-level players. In the end, you have to look at it this way, and I'm sure that they look at it this way too. If you want to be the champion, you have to defeat all and the best teams. In this case, playing against Madrid doesn't add a whole lot of extra pressure. I think that, as you said, the fact of being able to play a title game encloses enough motivation in itself. Whoever does turn out to be a game winner, all the protagonists have the utmost confidence in their ability. I think we're playing modern basketball fast with the idea of scoring many points. I think Barcelona tries to play long possessions and every team has a different style. We have to think about playing our style and the best way to reach the game and beat them. Let's see what they prepare. In both lines, outside, inside, offense, defense, I think we have a physical team 
and then another more talented team, which allows for combinations. I think that can be the difference with Madrid. Defense, offense, rebounding, and lots of energy. You need everything to go all the way. A top demanding game, as it can be no other way in a EuroLeague semi final. We want to win the EuroLeague, of course. I don't know how. <laughs>